and welcome to our weekly show, Let's Talk. As you all know that on this show, we talk about various sectors and segments to give you a little detail of what's really happening. This week, we have decided to touch upon real estate and also talk about Usefruct scheme that was introduced back in 2020, as well as the new scheme that has been introduced earlier this year, attracting more investors to come to the country, as well as the rental situation. And for that matter, we have two very special guests joining us today. So let's welcome Mr. Fahad Al Ismaili, who's the founder of Tibian Properties, and Ms. Ahlam Al Sanani, who's the founder and CEO of Nine Homes. Thank you to both of you for joining us today. Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan and good to Mubarak. see you all in person. Thank Ramadan you. Mubarak Thank to you also. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us. Um, Mr. Fahad, I'm going to start with you. As you know, we had already discussed use effect scheme back in 2020. Yes. Could you give us, our viewers, a little recap of what that scheme was? Yeah, uh, well, uh, back in 2020, uh, His Majesty the Sultan uh, endorsed or approved the uh, mid, uh, f f financial midterm uh, plan, which is called Tawazun. It is from 2020 to 2024. And that, uh, uh, that uh, financial plan included uh, four uh, real estate incentives, one of which one was the uh, allowing for non-Omanis or for expatriates to uh, own real estate in Oman on a user fract uh, basis. Uh, that initiative, uh, of course, it was well welcomed uh, back then uh, because it was uh, a good step to welcome uh, FDIs and, uh, and also uh, welcome uh, more buyers into the market and create more purchasing power. Um, uh, however, when the law came out and the articles of law came out, uh, it was a little bit uh, below the expectations. Uh, it had a lot of, it, I mean, it was a little bit tight and it had a lot mm. of barriers uh, for entry, uh, I would say, uh, of which one, uh, it did not uh, help in foreign direct investment because one of the uh, important uh, or the first uh, laws uh, of the article was that the expatriate must be a, res a resident in, in Oman for not right. less than two years. Right. All right. And then it went also to uh, uh, making, uh, tightening the screws further and further, uh, where it also uh, uh, did not allow uh, expatriates to buy for the purpose of investment. It had to be for the purpose of living or uh, per personal utilization of mm -hmm. that unit. And it was restricted only to residential unit and, um, and a two bedroom apartment, not a single bedroom apartment. And many other uh, restrictions uh, that, uh, that uh, did not really help uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the expatriates, uh, investors who are living in Oman to, to, to come into the scheme of user fract and uh, and enjoy uh, the and one of the also major uh, things which were the uh, residency yes. the residency also was not grant, is not being granted with the use of fract investment unlike the investment or the purchase in the uh, itc market yeah. so these these were the things which happened since the last time we spoke about mm. this i mean we were very much uh, uh, happy and looking uh, positively um, but i i, I don't think uh, uh, it, it served or it helped uh, uh, achieving the goals of this uh, initiative or this incentive in the real estate market. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, what really happens if you actually buy the property under this scheme mm. and then your contract expires, let's say for expats and you have to leave the country, can you still yes. keep the property, mm. keep it on rent or you have to sell it? Well, uh, according to the articles, uh, first the, the, the purchase has to be in a property which is already built, a ready property, you cannot buy off plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you cannot resell or rent unless four years is, has been uh, passed so from the date of uh, acquisition. Uh, now, in some cases, if the expatriate lost his job or had to leave the country, uh, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning can exempt him from, uh, from, from the four year uh, locking period. And, uh, and, and they'll be able to sell uh, the property, but not rent. They can sell it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what were the areas, Mr. Fahad, when we spoke about this uh, use effect mm. scheme? I remember there was some in mm. Al Khod and Mabila. Yes, there were various uh, locations uh, in Masqat. Uh, it was not yet opened until now. Mm. It's not yet opened outside Masqat. 
um, in various locations, and those locations uh, are uh, more commercial, uh, commercial in its nature. I mean, it's a little bit uh, in distance with the from the uh, residential uh, areas of of the local uh, communities. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you said that you know there were a lot of conditions and that kind yes. of hindered you know yes. the, it did not really give the output that everybody was looking forward to yeah. so till now you saying that you know it really hasn't served its purpose the user fraud yeah. scheme well uh, unfortunately uh, one of the things also we are missing here in oman is the statistics uh, i mean and the and the transactional uh, statistics uh, up to date uh, number of transactions that happens on a daily basis i mean we get it in in, in macro volumes but uh, we don't get it in, in, let's say, weekly details or daily even mm -hmm. details. Uh, but according to my knowledge and uh, interaction and trying to get also the uh, information, I don't think there is a single unit uh, has been sold on a user fract uh, basis until now, after, after almost uh, one and a half years from the, from the law. Wow, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> actually huge. But do you actually blame the COVID as well? COVID also put a, a lot of restrictions, you know, in terms of traveling, in mm. terms of people coming in and out of the country. Yes. And also a lot of expats left the country between these two years. Well, uh, COVID uh, undoubtedly uh, created a panic. Okay, we cannot uh, deny this. Uh, and definitely it will affect uh, whether it's uh, uh, purchase of user fract or even the normal ITCs. Many, many, maybe foreign investors in the ITC market also had to sell their properties due to panic, not for anything else. So uh, definitely, COVID had an impact on everything. And uh, alhamdulillah, now we are in the phases of uh, uh, taking off uh, yes. beyond uh, COVID-19. And inshallah, we will see positive uh, times coming inshallah, ahead. Inshallah. inshallah, inshallah. Now, we all know that, you know, the, talking about the COVID impact, we had a huge impact on the rental market in the Sultanate of Oman. Uh, Ehlam, how did you see the shift in the rents during this period? Uh, it depends on the, uh, the areas. Mm -hmm. For example, I could say uh, in some areas in Masbat has been affected a lot. And some area was have a good point, like positive point. Uh, if we're focusing more, if we comparison Matrah, Rui, that area comparing to Ghala, uh, Al Hail, Mawalih, it was a bit uh, booming. Mm. Remember Matra, that region was under lockdown too, mm. so the rents went down drastically yes, yes, over yes, there. Yes, yes, and yes. it's so only not because of the uh, the rent has been down because of the pandemic or people are leaving. Mm. Uh, in my opinion, it was uh, p the, the business has been shifted. Mm -hmm. Many people work has been shifted. Uh, uh, the position has been changed. Um, people also uh, yani, trying to get uh, another areas mm -hmm. and, and, and another business in that area. So this is the reason they shifted from that area to this area. Okay. I cannot say uh, the reason only the pandemic because this area was affected before the pandemic. Uh, we can see this. Okay. And how do you see the trend of rents now that, you know, Mr. Fahad also said that now we are actually looking beyond COVID. So do you think that things are going to get better? The rents are going to go up again? I hope not. <laughs> again, uh, in my opinion, the rock bottom is already there. We reached to that level. Now we are recovering, alhamdulillah. And uh, we could see uh, there is a lot of changes in the market starting from uh, maybe the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, from 2022, uh, is uh, like promising. Everything has been changed. Uh, the, the market situation is a bit uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we could see a good sign, positive signs, in terms of investment, in terms of business, in terms of local people, um, how they are trying to build their own house mm -hmm. and uh, changing the rent. The, the price of the rent also already changed. So, Mr. Fah, do you think that rents actually depends on the expatriate population in the country? Yeah, yes, I think uh, that is to some extent uh, correct. Uh, however, uh, we, are, we are managing a, a large portfolio of uh, assets and we've been noticing lately um, that uh, the number of Omanis, especially young Omanis, uh, 
uh, are uh, entering into the rental business mm -hmm. or they are coming into rental homes uh, and apartments instead of uh, the expatriates. And this also gives us an indication that uh, more Omanis are getting jobs and uh, the, the, the government uh, targeting Omanizations, uh, I think it's, it's, it's delivering its, uh, its, uh, uh, its outcomes. And uh, with regards to the, the drop, the, the question you asked, Ahlam, with mm. regards to the drop of rent, I think uh, the, 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 the panic which happened also went into the uh, rental market in the way that many people, especially expatriates, uh, whom thought that they will be uh, maybe losing their jobs or asked to leave the country or something like that, they tried to do some risk measurements by uh, moving from villas for, to apartments or bigger apartments to smaller apartments, just, just in, just, uh, in case uh, of, of any, uh, and that was all regard, with regards to the panic. I don't think, I mean, there's a lot of talks about uh, many expatriates have left the country and all that. Yes, there are a lot of expatriates left the country, but let's analyze whom are those uh, who expatriates left. who left the country. Are they executives? Are they laborers? Sure. Are they blue worker, blue, blue collars, white, white collars? Are they uh, contributing into the purchasing power of the country? Are they going, dining outside, uh, creating purchasing power in the market? Uh, th this analysis, uh, if you go and dig deep into these analysis, you will understand that the uh, majority of expatriates who left the country during COVID uh, times were uh, more on the uh, lower uh, grade, not the upper grades or the medium grades. Therefore, uh, it, it, the, the panic is what created, mm -hmm. uh, also landlords have panicked because many landlords went immediately to reduce rents just to sustain their current tenants. They thought that yeah. the, the, those, those tenants will, will, will leave. So in order to, it Keep was a, like a precaution yes. um, uh, active, uh, uh, action. Yeah. But how does it really affect when the property is left vacant for a very long time? That's another thing that I was noticing, you know, in the past couple of years that tenants were not, or the landlords were actually not, you know, reducing the rent and people were, some people were working on half salaries or some people were, you know, like they had a cut down in their salaries. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult for some tenants to actually afford to pay off the rent and they had to actually vacate the property. Do you think that actually has an impact on the economy too when the property is left vacant for a very long time? Alam, what do you think in your opinion? Comparing to what I saw, uh, that the landlord has been uh, too much cooperated with the people, I mean with the clients, with the tenants, uh, according to the situation which they already faced. Uh, as, a, as a landlord, I will prefer the tenant to be there instead of leaving the, the, the place and keep it empty. So I could see in uh, many landlords has been uh, co cooperation in this matter. The development is a, is, a, is a cash flow business. Therefore, uh, sustaining a tenant uh, is, is definitely better than keeping the uh, apartment or the unit empty. Keeping it empty uh, for a long time also will cause a lot of damages to the, to the, uh, to the unit in terms of, uh, you know, AC damages, maybe molding issues, mm, leakages issues. So a lot of uh, maintenance to have. And also your cash flow uh, is going to be interrupted. Many landlords are also uh, backed by bank uh, finance for their for their real estate uh, developments therefore any effect in the in the in the cash flow is also going to affect the, their uh, loan uh, payments therefore uh, i mean i mean it's two schools you know some landlords think no i will just keep it empty until i get the price i want others will will focus on the cash flow and this is i what what i think is is uh, is 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 um, uh, is supposed to be focus right. on cash flow right yeah. now you both are the experts in this field do you think this year the rents are going to go up or they're going to stay stagnant or how do you see the situation because i see a lot of properties are still vacant mm -hmm. and there are new projects coming up so do you think that's going to affect the rental situation i think uh, as ahlam said that we have reached the bottom line and uh, many things are positive uh, oil prices are increasing. Uh, the, the the general sentiment also is uh, positive. Uh, businesses are uh, the government also is going to spend on infrastructure and uh, 
development uh, plans. Therefore, I don't think uh, it's going to uh, go go below what what we have already seen. I mean, I, right. I don't think so. Alam, do you agree with the Mr. same Fahad? things what uh, Mr. Fahad says? We are in a good market situation, promising. However, uh, there is some obstacles there, but. Uh, until now, what I can see is, alhamdulillah, the, the market situation is going better and better every day. And we have seen this and witnessed comparing to the, the economic situation, the business uh, investor people who's coming. So yeah, the market situation is promising. Right, you know, talking about the promising market now that we know that this year under this scheme has been introduced, attracting more investors into the country. Mr. Fahad, can you tell us a little about that scheme? Yeah, well, <coughs> this scheme, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, issued by the Ministry of Commerce uh, in, in the beginning. And the Minister, Ministry of Re uh, Housing and Urban Planning also created uh, some of the uh, articles uh, or the uh, functions where the investor scheme can work in terms of investor visa. So basically, there are two categories. They are category one and category two. Uh, category one is uh, allowing uh, the foreign investor to uh, acquire and purchase a property uh, outside the ITC market, whether, uh, whether it's commercial or industrial or any commercial activity, and only to one unit. That is, if, he is, if this investor is having a grade one visa. Now, in order to have a grade one visa, you need to purchase a single or multiple number of units, of real estate units, within the ITC market, which, which are worth 500,000 Omani Riyals or more. Uh, after that, you're eligible to buy outside the ITC market, and you're only restricted to one uh, unit. Uh, category two uh, is, is purchasing real estate in the ITC market up to 250,000, whether it's a single unit or multiple units, and it doesn't allow you to purchase any real estate unit outside the ITC, but it gives you some privileges of uh, working in Oman, doing business in Oman, and um, uh, allowing you to, 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 to bring uh, your family and uh, so on. Therefore, this is, this is only what uh, this uh, new scheme is all about. Uh, it's not like uh, what uh, many people thought that now expatriates can go directly and buy within the normal market. Mm. That is not correct. That is uh, um, maybe a lot of people try to take advantage of uh, spreading these uh, false uh, news, but this is not correct. Uh, I mean, in order to purchase outside the RTC market, you need to be um, a holder of category one. And in order to be uh, a holder of category one visa, you need to invest not less than 500,000 okay, within the ITC market. Mm. Therefore, uh, uh, it's not, it's not uh, immediate uh, purchase into the local market. It is a process. And uh, of course, uh, this is uh, to, to the government is, again, testing the water, uh, diving uh, mildly into the uh, opening the doors. And uh, hopefully by time it will also be more relaxed than, than how it is right now. Because, you know, now the ticket size is, is so big. Yes, uh, yeah. absolutely. Now, what I'm understanding that under this scheme, the investors will be getting residency? Yes, they will be getting residency uh, for sure. And this residency, I mean, m maybe someone will ask, what is the difference between this residency and if I just buy a normal apartment in the, in, the, in the ITC market? Mm. The difference here is that buying a, any normal apartment, uh, which is going on for, let's say, 100,000 or 50,000 within the ITC, it gives you a residency, but it gives you, it doesn't allow you to work or do business in Oman. Okay. Now, if you want to work and do business in Oman on your own real estate uh, visa, th then you need to have uh, a visa category two or one. So, so, so this is how it is. So today, if any expatriates who uh, comes to Oman and buy an apartment in any ITC project, he will get the residency visa. But that residency is only to live and to enjoy his real estate. Right. Uh, it doesn't allow him to work and do business in Oman. 
Okay, yeah, so that's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, that definitely. Need it to is know. A, yeah, it is a big difference. Yeah, definitely. And how do you see, Mr. Fahad, that this scheme now attracting investors into the country will benefit the economy? Well, uh, no doubt that any uh, investment uh, coming into the country will benefit the economy. Uh, so, so any any investment that comes to the country will benefit the economy. Uh, but until now, I have no clear uh, sight, honestly, on the number of transactions, the number of foreign investors who uh, came into the country with this uh, mm -hmm. schemes. Inshallah, maybe by uh, the, the coming days, uh, we can see some statistics from the from NCSI, yeah, the National Center for Statistics and Information. Yeah. So, Alam, I know that something very interesting is, you know, happening for Dukum. Can you tell our viewers about it? Uh, Dukum um, is promising and uh, the government's already encouraging investors, local people to invest there. Uh, we have one project called Skyline and uh, we are promoting the, the people to go and buy the mm. ITC projects and alhamdulillah we are doing well. Um, we have one uh, right now one promotion happening in one of the malls in uh, Muscat. So for forum information, I mean for people who wants to invest and uh, looking about the uh, opportunity for the mm. purchasing, they can come and look to it. And this is for both uh, locals and the yes, expats Yes, for in the all country. local and expat, yes. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to both of you. We covered so much from Yusufrat scheme to the investor schemes to the rental situation and now Dukum as a promising property. Uh, thank you for taking up time and yeah, being here. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Madiha, thank you uh, always for uh, having our views uh, Thank for you so your much. Uh, good listeners and uh, inshallah things will get better soon. Inshallah, I hope inshallah. so. Thank you so much. See you next time, inshallah. For more interesting videos and updates, stay tuned and keep watching TTV.